Hello everyone, welcome back to another session of Flow Builder practice series. So in today's video, we are going to see how to create a data table in screen flows. All right, so let's just go ahead and get started. So I will navigate to my arc. And I'm going ahead and creating a flow. So as I want to display the data table, I'll be creating a screen flow. Click on create. All right. So before I actually get started, I want to show you what are the properties or you can say attributes that we actually get along with the data table. So let me just quickly drag a screen over here and let me show you what and all do we get in the data table. Okay. So this is the data table element. Okay. And if you actually see this element here, you are seeing the API name that you have to provide to the data table. You have to provide a label and then also you can use the same label as the table title okay and then in the configured data sources if you see we have the first attribute called source collection so which is uh, enter a record collection to populate the tape table right so whatever list you want to populate in the data table that that collection you have to provide here right so for example if i want to display all the accounts here right so i want to uh, I should be able to, I should be basically fetching those accounts using get records and I should be storing those accounts in a variable and then that collection I can use it over here, right? Likewise, if I, let's say I want to display uh, all the contexts that are available or all the opportunities. So I have to, first I have to fetch those records and then I can use those records as the source collection over here, okay? <clears throat> and then we have three options, multiple, single and view only. So view only something that uh, in your data table, you will not get any selection option, right? So for example, let's say if you are displaying all the list of accounts and if you want to, let's say, select two rows from the accounts, then you will not be able to do that in the view only mode, okay? Because in the view only mode, you will only be able to see the data, but you will not be able to select any of the rows from the table, okay? But if you choose single, this option, right, then all the rows in the data table will be uh, like, you know, embedded with a radio button. So you can only select one record, right, when you are uh, choosing this particular mode, single mode. And when, when you're choosing multiple mode, then all the table rows will come along with a checkbox and you can select as many rows as you want, okay? All right, so, and also in multiple options, we have something called minimum row selection and maximum row selection. So let's say I have, uh, in my org, I have 10, 10, 10 account records and that is what is getting displayed on my data table, right? But I don't want the user to select more than uh, three account records, right? So I will be, I will set those, uh, that number three in the maximum row selection and minimum row selection is something that you want to mandate the user for the selection, right? So I, let's say in my data table, I want to make it mandatory for the user to select at least one row, okay? So I would be putting one here as the number, okay? And if I don't want the user to select more than three rows, then I would be putting that three as the maximum row selection, all right? Then we have something as configure columns. We'll not get that here because we have to have the source collection, okay? Because based on the object, it is going to show me like, you know, what are the columns that you can configure. So let's just do one thing before I go to each and every option and explain you. Let's just go ahead and create one data table so that like, you know, we can explore all the options from here. So because we need the source collection, right? So let's just go ahead and fetch all the accounts that I have in the system, okay? So... um get records all accounts all right so here account and i want to get all the account records so all account records all records here and click on done so i have all the account records here now i can go ahead and create the screen okay so here let's just give some screen property and here I will be using the data table, okay? So data table, let's just give it as account display. And here account record display. And the same label you can use as the table title. So I'll just use that. Configure data source, right? So I need to use the collection that I just like, you know, uh, used to query to fetch all the account records. So this is the collection. And here I'm going to start with the view only mode, okay? So in view only mode, all we have, 
all we can do is like you know configure the columns that what are the columns from this collection that you actually want to display in your data table right so uh let's just select in the source field let's just select account name okay and here this is this is custom column label so let's say this is the standard name that is coming up right the standard label from the object so let's say if you want to give some different name for example if i choose this i can keep it as account name so if you want to keep a custom label you can do this as well all right and let's just add another column uh, let me select phone okay and uh, let's just select one more maybe create a date okay and then click on done okay so these are the i am creating the table in the view only mo mode right so there would be no radio buttons no check boxes because mainly you cannot make any row selection in the table and then these are the columns that would be displayed and that's it let's just click on done here and let's also create another screen uh, this we will be using in the next scenario so just into so that i can like you know show you the scenario of the next and previous right so and that's it i'm not going to do anything else over here so this is just this much all right save data table for accounts or accounts All right, because I have not connected this. Save and activate data table for account. So now let's just go ahead and include this flow somewhere. Let me go ahead and keep it on the home page because I have a lot of space on the home page. So here you need to find first. Let's just find flow, drag and drop it here. And then we have to search for the flow that we have created, data table for accounts, okay? Data table for accounts, this is the one. All right, click on save. Let's go back and see. So here it is, right? So first thing, if you notice that this, the table title is nothing but the label that I have given, right? Because I had clicked on that checkbox that it, it can use the same label as the table title. And then I had selected these three fields, account name, account phone, and created date. So these three are coming as the column. And also you can see there is no radio button or checkboxes because I have created this data table only in view only mode, all right? So, okay, now let's just go ahead and see the next option that we have. So here, if I go to the screen, go to the data table and let me select this one, single, okay? So when I select single, then that means I would be seeing all the records of the data table with a radio button, okay? <clears throat> so what does radio button mean, right? That you can only select one record, right? Because in check boxes, you can select multiple records, but in radio button, you can only select one. So that is, that is how it is, right? So if you select this mode single, then you would be able to select only one row okay and there is another check here require user to make a selection right so if you make this required then user will not be able to go to the next screen without selecting at least one record okay so let me one second uh, so let me make it required okay and click on done Sorry for this, save as, save and activate. Now let's just go ahead and try this. So now here, here you can see because I have changed the data table mode to a uh, single. So that is why it is showing me the radio buttons. Now, if I try to go to the next screen, it should give me an error saying that you should at least select one record, right? Because I have selected that checkbox of one like in one uh, row selection is required so if i click on next you can see here please select minimum one row now if i select one row and click on next see it allowed me to go to the next screen all right now let's just go ahead and check the other options that we have <clears throat> so um 
All right. And then if I go to multiple, right? So in multiple, you would be seeing the check boxes here. Okay. Instead of radio button so that you can make like, you know, you can select more than one rows. And then here you can select either minimum or maximum selection. Okay. So the, like, you know, what I think I just explained you, right? So if you select minimum as let's say minimum as two, then user has to select at least two rows. Okay. So whatever minimum selection you keep, the user has to at least select that many rows. And maximum row selection is that user will not be able to select more than that uh, particular number of rows, whatever you define here. So if you define here as three, so here, let's say if I come here and like, you know, this would be check boxes, right? Because I, I would be creating this under multiple. So let's say if I select three, the moment I try to select the, like the, the moment I select the third record, everything else that is remaining and unchecked will become disabled. Okay. User will not be able to select more than uh, the number of records that you have defined here. So let's just define it here as one and three. Okay. And default selection is something uh, that you can use when you have actually saved the rows that user has selected. For example, let me show you. So configure columns is okay. And we have component visibility is fine. And then advanced. So in advanced, if you see, we have two options available over here. Okay. Use values uh, from when the user last visited the screen and then refresh inputs to incorporate changes elsewhere in the flow. Okay. So this one, right? So use values from when the user last visited the screen and then refresh input. Okay. So what does this mean is that let's say whatever selection I make here. And if I go to the next screen, okay not with not with radio buttons with check boxes okay if i go to the let me first just save this and then i'll show you so done save as save and activate okay and refresh so now we have the check boxes right because we have created the table in the multiple mode now so minimum i have to select at least one so if i click on next it should give me the error that you have to at least select one row so this is the error, right? Now one row, but the but the number of maximum rows that I can select is three, right? So second selection. And the moment I click on this one, this and this, or like and whatever remaining is there, everything else should be disabled, okay? So let me just try this, this, and you can see, see everything else got disabled, right? So now I have selected three rows. Now, if I click on next, so what do you think should happen if I click on previous? The three records that I have I had selected, should those be selected or it will get refreshed? So if I click on previous, you can see that nothing is selected, right? I had selected these three records, right? But it got refreshed. But let's say I want to retain the selection. So for that, you have to select this option. Uh, No, actually it should have, hold on, changes also. Let me try this, okay. Save and activate. So let me just select this and this. Next, previous. So now if I go here, So I, so in order to retain the values that you have like, you know, selected on this screen, so whatever I have selected on this screen, and if I click on next, and if I go back, right, if I click on previous, and if I want to see those two values as selected ones, then I have to store those right somewhere. And then I can use, and then I can actually use these two options to show the selected rows that I had actually selected when I was on the previous screen, right? So for that, you have to click on this manually assign values. So there are two options. You can either save the first row that was selected, okay? Or you can save all the rows that were selected. So for example, if I select here three rows, so either I can only create a variable and store the first selection or uh, row selection that I had created, or I can save all the records, right? All the row selection that is selected here, all right? So for that, to 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 like you know save only the first selected row that means like you know a single record right so let's just let's just do both okay so i'll be creating a variable here so single record saved 
and then here I will not allow multiple because okay so record and then object would be account okay I'm not allowing multiple here because this is only for the uh, first selected row right only one row I'm like you know that means only one record I'm select like you know saving so that should be sufficient and let me just create another one all row all sorry all rows selected okay so here data type would be record but here i would be allowing multiple values okay account and then done all right so this is fine and let me just see what component visibility is okay and uh, default selection in default selection i want to see all selected row right and then click on done save save and activate let's go here and refresh so let me select two rows grand hotels and united oil and gas click on next and then if i go on the previous see these are selected right because i had saved the selected rows all right but let's say if i go to this screen component and data table again and I go to advanced and let's say I am using the refresh input. Okay, this option. Then let's see what happens. Save and then activate. Let's just select these two. Next and previous. These are still selected. And why are these still selected? Because I have kept the default selection as this one, right? So I'll just remove this and let me save this. Save as and save and activate. All right, and let me refresh this. So I'm selecting these two. Next. And if I now, if I go on the previous, that two, 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 two records rows that I have selected, those should get unselected. Okay. Right. No, default selection is not removed here, right? So remove it done save as save and then activate let's just do it again all right right so this got refreshed okay so if you have saved the rows that you have selected and if you keep that in the default selection then you like you know when you actually go to the previous screen you will be able to see the rows that you had selected or if you want to like, you know, refresh it, you can use the refresh option and you can also remove the uh, default selected rows. All right. So these are few basic controls that you can actually use when you're using the data table. Um, I think that's it. Like, you know, if you like, you, know, you can explore more on the data table and if you have other, like, you know, any other question or queries, you can uh, comment and I'll try to answer them all. Right. So thank you for watching and I'll be creating another videos on like, you know, a lot of more other scenarios. So stay tuned. Bye bye.